The Rams are getting ready for Monday Night Football. What needs to go right for them to get their fifth win of the season? That's coming up next on Locked on Rams. You are Locked on Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen every day, free and available wherever you get your podcasts. My name is Travis Rogers. Thanks for making us a part of what you do every single day here on the Locked on Podcast Network. Click on your subscribe button, right? That way you get your Rams content every single day. You should also check us out on YouTube. Our Locked on Rams YouTube page is a good way to take in the pod. And lastly, I would suggest that you follow me on Twitter as well. At Travis Rogers is the best way to do that. We are heading into the home stretch of the season. Just four games left, including the Monday night game uh, against the Packers coming up to tonight. I'll tell you about it. The one and only trip I've made to Lambeau Field way back in 19, early 1997 uh, for an NFC Championship game. I'll tell you about that in just a little bit. Spend some time talking about Bobby Wagner and how good he's been this year for the Rams in a season that has been an absolute bust across the board. And by the way, as fun as the uh, Raider game was about 10 days or so ago, uh, do not expect them to win a whole bunch of games over the, the the last month or so of the season. They still got four games to go. Not super optimistic on how those are going to go. But Bobby Wagner has been terrific in those moments. That's coming up as well. But let's talk about first about what's going to happen on the game tonight in Lambeau Field. That's coming up in just a sec. But first, let me remind you that LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL. Okay. So um, let's start right here. Let's start with um, what needs to go right for the Rams tonight if they are going to find a way to win their second consecutive game and find a way to get win number five on the season. They are a touchdown dog. It is going to be freezing cold. They still have all sorts of problems on their offensive line. They still don't have a running game to speak of. They still don't have a wide receiver core that's going to strike fear in opposing defenses. And they have a quarterback that, you know, as fun as Thursday night was against the Raiders and as good as Baker Mayfield was against the Raiders, um, is still a, a a very, very average NFL quarterback at best, maybe below average, a guy that's only been in your system uh, for about 10 days, and somebody that uh, has, has a long and distinguished history of, you know, not playing great when a lot of people are looking in the NFL. That's Baker Mayfield. So what has to work for them? To, oh, and by the way, I uh, still don't know if Aaron Donald's going to play. Probably very unlikely that he does, um, nor would I expect him to. But that's what's going on with the Rams as they head in to Green Bay. So what needs to go right? Number one, they need to force Aaron Rodgers into passing situations, right? As weird as that sounds, as, as counterintuitive as it is with Aaron Rodgers, you want to put him in a situation where he's got to throw it on every single play, where the, the running game has been completely neutralized and they are a one-dimensional team and they are throwing the ball over and over and over again. Aaron Rodgers, obviously, is one of the great quarterbacks of his generation. He's going straight to the Hall of Fame, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, right? But what makes Aaron Rodgers so darn good, what makes really any quarterback really good, but Aaron Rodgers in particular a very good NFL player is when they can utilize play action. When he's when he has the ability to do play action, when the defense has to respect that running game, forget about it. He's going to carve you up all night long. But when you don't have to respect the running game, when you can just pin your ears back and go get number 12, it changes a lot of things. So the Rams need to find a way to control that running game and to put Rodgers into passing situations over and over and over again. That's number one, because... Frankly, we know this. If you've watched the Rams and if you're listening to this podcast, you probably watch a lot of Rams football. But if you watch the Rams, they're not going to score 24 points. They're not going to score 30 points. They might get to 17. Maybe if things break really well for them, they might get to 20. But this is not a team that's going to put together 
uh, a bunch of touchdown drives, which means it needs to be low scoring, which means they need to control clock, which means you need to limit possessions on the Green Bay side of the ball. So what the Rams need to do to do those things is run well. The ring, here we are. We're going into week 15. Okay, week 15. The Rams still have not had a single running back hit the 65-yard threshold. Not once. And I know I've said this a lot, but I want to say it again. That's not just an inability to get to 65 yards doing it, you know, three and a half, four, four and a half, five yards per carry. That means that at no point in the season did someone bust a big run. Did somebody bust a 45-yarder along the way, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, I just got to get 20 more from here. No, they haven't been able to do it all season long. I don't expect them to be able to do it tonight because you're going to have to find a way to get Baker Mayfield some time. The running game will allow Mayfield to make some plays from the pocket. Hopefully, again, pretty skeptical in that situation that that's going to be something that he's going to be able to do. Um, And then lastly, Mayfield's got to have a little magic. Mayfield's got to have that thing that you hope he has, which he did have against the Raiders, just that little spark, that little attitude, that little bounce, that little whatever it is that's very difficult to quantify. You're going to have to have some more of that from him because you don't have a ton of playmakers. You don't have that running game. But what you might have is somebody that just finds a way to get it done. I also think that this is probably a pretty good time to recalibrate expectations on what Baker Mayfield may bring, myself included. Um, Mayfield was great against the Raiders. And, and by great, I mean under the circumstances. He was he was good under any circumstance. He was great under those circumstances. No time to prepare. Didn't know his teammates, et cetera, et cetera. We've talked about it a lot. The fact of the matter is, Baker Mayfield is one of the least productive quarterbacks in the NFL. The reason that Baker Mayfield is here with the Rams is because the Carolina Panthers, who are bad, said, no, no thanks. If Carolina had even gotten a little bit from Baker, they're probably in a playoff spot right now. The NFC South is as bad as it is. But he has not been good. It was fun on Thursday. He's got to play a lot better. The one thing he did do really well on Thursday that he's going to have to do against the Packers on Monday Night Football is he's going to have to not throw it to the wrong team. Don't turn it over. He did a good job with that on um, Thursday. Hopefully he can do it again tonight. All right, coming up next, we'll talk about Bobby Wagner and how good he has been for the Rams this season. But first, let's talk about our friends from BetterHelp. Better this this podcast is brought to you by our friends at Better Help. Wouldn't it be nice if life came with a user manual? If every time you ran into a little bit of a problem, you knew how to attack it perfectly and so and, and you just kind of went right through it all the way, right? Better help is basically the next best thing, right? It does not come with a user manual, your life, our brains, unfortunately. So when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel a little stuck, a little, you know, not quite sure what to do next. Better help therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine called you. Better help is connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient, secure, and accessible anywhere, and it is 100% online. Everyone deserves to feel their best. Everyone deserves to get going and make things a little bit easier, and better help makes it easier to get started. Therapy can help you feel better. It can help you get unstuck. All of the benefits of in-person therapy, plus it's more convenient, more accessible, and it's more affordable. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. Get unstuck with BetterHelp. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Here's how you do it. You add your job in the purple hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are hiring. And with simple tools like screening questions, it makes it much easier to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and ultimately hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading candidates. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. 
Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen every day. Make sure to check out the Locked on Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories around the world in 20 minutes or less, plus instant reactions, game recaps, and Locked on's take of the day. Locked on Sports Today, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. All right, so Bobby Wagner has been the maybe the lone bright spot in a season that has been completely unfulfilling and unsatisfying and every unother emotion that you can think of along the way. Th- let's just go back and kind of run through some of the things that we thought were going to be um, on the table this year. Let's go back to the end of the season last year when uh, the Rams win the Super Bowl, And then what happens immediately after that, the Rams go out and acquire Allen Robinson um, and let Robert to trade Robert Woods to the Tennessee Titans, but added another weapon uh, to their wide receiving core that we all thought was going to be wildly effective. Not the case. He was on his best day average, and he didn't have any best days. Terribly disappointing uh, as far as that goes. You had a completely rebuilt offensive line. Disastrous. Just didn't, from opening bell, did not work all season long. Cooper Cup hurt in the middle of the season. Only played half a year. Matthew Stafford really never had a chance to get on track. Bad year for him across the board. None of the running backs really popped the way that you needed them to. Nothing has worked the way you did, with the exception of Bobby Wagner, who has been terrific. According to Pro Football Focus, the number one rated middle linebacker in the entire league. You could not have asked more from Bobby Wagner than what you've gotten from him this year. This is somebody that not only has played great football for you, but somebody who has taken on a leadership role in that organization, um, despite the fact that he only got here at the beginning of the season. Aaron Donald, obviously, is going to be the de facto leader on this team. Jalen Ramsey is always going to have an, an outsized leadership role because of his ability and because of his personality. But Bobby Wagner is another one of those guys that walks in there and everybody listens and everybody's going to watch. And Bobby Wagner has been out there every single day, every single week, every single game, playing at his absolute best. You can talk about everything that's gone wrong this season for the team, and you'd be right. Everything that could be bad has been, with the exception of Bobby Wagner. Of all the moves that the Rams made during the offseason, this was the one that lived up exactly the way that you were hoping to. The problem is you needed all of those things, or at least more of those things, to connect in the way that the Wagner deal did, and they didn't. You you can't have Joe Nopum be as bad as he was and then get hurt. You can't have your middle of your offensive line have go, go through as many players as they have. You can't have Allen Robinson face plant the way that he does this season and expect everything to keep moving the way that it did. You can't have Cooper Cup be down for half the season and expect to, to work the way that it has. You can't have four different starting quarterbacks and have everything work out the way that you were hoping. The only thing that worked was Bobby Wagner. Welcome to LA. Look forward to having you again next season. Where it gets weird though, and we'll see, and this is something that I'm sure will get talked about a lot during the off season is, do you bring him back? Do you cut him? Do you have to make a decision? Do you eat a bunch of money along the way? Not because of his play, but because you got a whole bunch of other things that you got to get done. I would expect him to come back, but you just never know. When you have a season where you win four or five games or however many of the Rams are ultimately going to land on, this is what you get where you got to make weird decisions. But of all of the moves they made this year, the Bobby Wagner acquisition was certainly the best among them. All right, coming up next, we'll talk about my one and only and hopefully last trip to Green Bay in January. That's coming up next on Locked on Rams. First, let's talk about prize picks, right? Here's what it is. You pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry, right? So what does that mean? More or less than their projections? Well, there will be projections at prizepicks.com. For instance, Patrick Mahomes, more or less than 320 yards. Derrick Henry, more or less than 85 yards. Uh, Tyree Kill, more or less than three and a half catches. You decide over, under, if you get it right, 10 times your money, pick two to five players. You know how it goes, right? No competing against other players. It's just you against the projections available. It's safe and fast to withdraw your money. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It is just that easy. How do I do it? Here's how you do it. 
Download the Prize Picks app. Go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. And first time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Price picks will give you 50. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100. All right. So, the one and only time that I have been to uh, Lambeau Field, it was for the NFC Championship game going back to uh, it was the 1996 season. It was actually the calendar year 1997, January of 1997, NFC Championship game between the uh, Packers and the Carolina Panthers. And you're thinking, what Carolina ver- what version of the Carolina Panthers was that? It was the version where Kerry Collins was the quarterback, okay? Long time ago. The reason I'm bringing this up is, is expected to be in single digits uh, by the time that this game is kicked off on Monday night at Lambeau Field. When I went for the NFC Championship game, it was in the teens. It was a beautiful day, but it was in the teens, and... It had snowed the week before. So if you are anything like me growing up in and around Southern California or warm weather climates, you hadn't, what is one of the things you do when you go to a football game? What is one of the things that you're trying to figure out how to to do for as long as possible? What I, when I pack my stuff to go to a football game, if I'm not working, if I'm going as a fan, you pack the cooler, right? You pack the cooler full of beer. You put a bunch of ice in the cooler and you, you find a way to keep that beer as cold as possible for as long as possible because you know in California, eventually that ice is going to melt and eventually the beer is not going to be as cold as you want it. And so you're just grinding away to find beer as cold for as long as possible. This was the first case when you went to Lambeau Field where you knew it was going to be a little different. We're walking through the tailgate. Somebody says to me, hey, can I grab you a beer? Sure, I'd love to have one. And they say, okay, I'll be right back. And I'm thinking, be right back. I'm go buy a beer. What do you mean? It's tailgate. It's got to be beer everywhere, right? They go into the car and they come out and hand me a beer. I'm thinking, well, that's weird. And I said, why, why do you keep the why do you keep the beers in the car? Because we have to keep them in the car with the heater running, or they will freeze. <laughs> right? You've, we've all done it. We've all left a beer in the freezer and you forget it's you know and it'll pop and then you can't have your beer. It was so cold outside that you had to put the beers in a place to keep them so they wouldn't freeze. That's how cold it is. That's how miserable it is. And because it had been snowing all week long, on your way into Lambeau Field, they give it this little piece of cardboard, right? And what you're supposed to do is kind of swipe the cardboard across your seat, put the snow down where your feet uh, are off your seat, put the snow down where your feet are going to go. And I did have warm boots, but you put your feet into this snow, you put the cardboard down and you put your feet on top of the cardboard so you don't have your feet buried in the snow all game. Never again. You're bundled up so much with a with a you know long sleeve shirt, a uh, hoodie, a uh, jacket, gloves, hat, the whole thing, right? The scarf. You're just bundled up like Frosty the Snowman, but you're so much wider than you would typically be because you have all of these layers. You can't even stand up and sit down without everybody doing it in unison because you're wedged in there like sardines into a can. That's how cold it is. Never ever again. I don't know what the Rams are going to be able to do. I don't know how many of these guys come from cold weather climates to begin with. I don't know how many guys are looking forward to doing this again. All I know is if you have been in California, especially Los Angeles, for any period of time, and you run into something like that, you will never forget it, and you will never want to do it again. I'm glad I did it. Had a great time. Enjoyed the game. Packers won, went to the Super Bowl, ended up winning the Super Bowl that year. But I will never go back to Lambeau Field in the cold. I'll go in September and October. Nice crisp in the air. That sounds good. Below zero, hard pass. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked on Rams. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Now for your second listen, Peter Bukowski brings you the biggest stories from around the sports world. In 20 minutes, get the analysis and opinion before anyone else with our local and national experts and insiders. Locked on Sports Today podcast available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Till next time, whose house? It's Locked on Rams house.